Welcome to our online worship today as we ponder the great hymn of humility and exaltation that we find in our first reading. It's St Paul's second chapter to the Philippians where we find a very early Christian hymn or perhaps creed which describes what some have called the divine parabola. From the heights of heaven as co-creator then humbling himself to take our human form and to die even upon the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him with a name above every other name, and before whom every knee should bow. It's a vivid image of descent from heaven, an earthly sojourn, the sacrifice of the cross, and then a return to heavenly glory. So we rejoice in that divine gift, and more than that, inasmuch as we are united with him, then by grace through faith, we are also caught up with him in his upward trajectory, risen, ascended and glorified, as another hymn describes it. So let us now begin our worship as we join in our opening hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. 
Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the liturgy today, our attention is drawn towards a very early Christian hymn, or perhaps a creed, which St Paul includes in his letter to the Philippians, urging his readers to cultivate humility and exalting them to take Christ as their model. Beautifully eloquent, it describes the path of Christ's life. Characterised by a a sublime humility or kenosis, a self-emptying, in order that we, for whom he came down from heaven, might follow him who was exalted. The exaltation was his by right and ours by grace. These verses are sometimes called the divine parabola. From the heights of heaven as co-creator, then humbling himself to take our human form, and to die even upon the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, with a name above every other name, and before whom every knee should bow. It's a vivid image of descent from heaven, an earthly sojourn, the sacrifice of the cross, and then a return to heavenly glory. So we rejoice in that divine gift, and more than that, inasmuch as we are united with him, then, by grace, through faith, we are also caught up with him in his upward trajectory. Risen, ascended and glorified, as another hymn describes it. Thanks to the art of the visual commentary on scripture and their insights, we can see three works of art which explore this theme of having the mind of Christ. The first is called The Bearers of the Burden, by Van Gogh. As you can see, it's a rather gloomy grey work. Having undertaken theological studies himself, Van Gogh was appointed as a lay pastor in an impoverished mining district of Belgium and was obsessed with following Christ in his solidarity with those who serve and, for some months, lived in a miner's hut not counting entitlement to the pastor's lodgings a thing to be grasped, as St Paul would have put it. He even went down into the dangerous local mine, later describing this as the depth of the abyss. Like Christ, he had descended. Not long after, having been dismissed from his position, he again modelled himself on Christ, saying, I shall rise again, I will take up. My pencil. Here the women in the scene 
a bent double under the sacks of coal gleaned from slag heaps to burn in their homes. It's perhaps an allusion to Matthew 23, verse 4, where Jesus denounces those who lay heavy burdens on others and don't lift a finger themselves. The viaduct in the distance is a triumphant monument to the industry that determines the lives of the women. Behind it, separated from their world of servitude, but benefiting from it, stand a Protestant and a Catholic church. These women are at once abandoned and oppressed. In this they share the burden and the mind of Christ, who himself bore the burden of the world, in deep solidarity with suffering humanity. The next image chosen to illuminate this passage is called Under the Earth, part of the introduction to an English book of illuminated psalms. This particular take on the traditional iconography of Christ at the mouth of Hades boldly asserts that there is no such thing as a God-forsaken place or a God-forsaken human condition. An image steeped in hope. The basis of the icon is the harrowing of hell, the idea that on Holy Saturday Christ went down into Hades to retrieve the souls of the righteous who had predeceased him. As such, it's a post-biblical development of Christian thought, but its origins lie in the New Testament. The Philippians' hymn, thought by many to be a pre-Pauline liturgical text, pressed into service by the Apostle, has this sense of descent in its first two verses and reference to the depths of the earth. But the overall trajectory is clearly down and then up, from degradation to exaltation, with the turning point at the verse of the crucifixion. It would seem that Paul pressed this hymn into the service of his argument on faithful Christian living so his readers would understand that there is no route to exaltation other than to be in Christ, to participate in his humility and obedience unto death. Christ descended to be with human beings and to offer them the opportunity of being taken hold of by him through faith so that he could, as it were, pull them up with him into the resurrection life. This image communicates the movement superbly, capturing the liberating hold of Christ on Adam with Eve not far behind. Their rebirth from the jaws of hell to the attainment of full human dignity and the transformation of despair to joy on the faces of those about to be released. Christ is seen to have triumphed over the powers of darkness and unequivocally to have done this via his cross. And the last and third image may be more familiar. Being found in human form by Holman Hunt entitled The Shadow of Death. Ambitious in scale, technical execution and theology, it contains an immense density of detail and sheer number of symbolic references. It could be a purely human scene of a young carpenter stretching, stiff from his labours as the day draws to its close. But we are also offered here a glimpse of the redemptive work of Christ. At first glance, the painting seems to be about the crucifixion. The evening sunshine that so gloriously transfigures his body and intensifies the blue of his natural halo also casts a dark shadow. For this moment, the carpenter's tools prefigure the instruments of the Passion. The ease with which he extends his tired limbs, prefiguring and contrasting with their brutal distortion on the cross. Yet Hunt had painted a very similar and smaller version a year earlier and inscribed the Philippians' text on the frame, thus drawing attention to the humanity and humility of the scene rather than its ominous signs of crucifixion. Christ is found in the form of an ordinary Jewish artisan, 
standing in a humble workshop, a space he shares with his mother, who's opened a chest, whose treasured contents, gifts from the Magi, point back to the Nativity as much as forward to the cross. The real subject of the painting is the relationship between incarnation and humility. A portrait of a flesh and blood, real historical Jesus, whose humility is expressed in the ambiguous circumstances of his conception and birth, and then in his lowly status as a working man. These in themselves foreshadow the nature of his death by the most humiliating execution that his culture could contrive. So all three explore the nature of Christ setting aside of entitlement, his taking on human form, his obedience to a shameful death, and the transformation of that death to exaltation and triumph. Triumph for the whole human race. They validate and give a dignity too to manual labour, so important to Van Gogh. Yet it is in the harrowing of hell that the cross has the most central place, dividing the composition in two, just as it does in the text of the Philippians hymn. Here we see that it is the cross of Christ's staff that beats down Satan and the powers of darkness. The cross is the pivot of the work of salvation, which is why the degradation and victory of the cross are held together by the conjunctive adverb, therefore, in the Philippians text. The cross is at once the culmination of Christ's humble dwelling with his people and the means by which he raises up humanity with him to the heavenly places. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, confident that God is present with us, hears us and knows what is right. Heavenly Father, so inspire your church that through faithful worship, joyful witness and generous hearts, we may help reveal the meaning and beauty of your kingdom. Grant us also the humility to see our flaws and the strength and resolve to address them. We raise to you all who minister in your name and pray you will support and strengthen them, especially in these uncertain and challenging times. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray that those with power and authority do not abuse their positions and acknowledge the worth and dignity of all. When things go wrong and vulnerable people are hurt, we pray that they will be heard, cared for, and that justice will be done. May the leaders of the world have both wisdom and compassion seeking always the welfare of all and the health and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you gave us a world of richness and wonder. Help us care for it and for those who share it with us. At the touch of a button, we can see the effects of climate change and pollution, and even the poorest can now see the prosperity of others. We pray that both as nations and as individuals we may be good stewards of this planet and good neighbours to those in need. Break down the barriers between people and between nations that we may all work together to tackle the medical, economic and environmental problems we face. Lord, 
In your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask your blessing on this community and thank you for all who serve and care for others, especially those whose jobs had been unnoticed in the past. We thank you for the part they play in our life together. We hold before you all those in education facing new and difficult times, especially remembering our local schools. And as new restrictions aim to limit the spread of COVID, we pray that a spirit of care and concern will shelter all those who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we bring before you all in need of care and compassion. We remember those who have asked for our prayers. May they know your presence with them. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and hold them safely in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who mourn and thank you for the gift of family and friends we see no more. Our lives were made richer and brighter by their presence and we remember them with gratitude. May we with them come to the fullness of joy in your eternal presence. In a moment of silence, let us now offer our own prayers to our Heavenly Father, knowing that nothing can separate us from his love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you to all of you who are able to continue with your planned giving and offerings in support of this church and the work of the church throughout the diocese. Yours, Lord, 
is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints 
may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.